Welcome to another Mac 7 tutorial. This is number 40. Today we're going to do Jitter Effects, the X-Fade object. And uh, just to keep uh, people on their toes, and when I say that I mean myself, I'm uh, just going to open up a brand new blank patcher as though I have not been sitting around and preparing this for months. Um, there we go. And we're going to do more or less what we did um, when we're using the JIT op, which technically is a, a fancier object. But um, I thought we'd just sort of get used to Mac 7 and all these great things that it does and um, see if we can't just uh, start using some of the features. So rather than use a, a JIT QT movie, I thought, well, heck, I'm just going to grab a movie and bring it out here. So here's our beloved basketball movie. And uh, just go over here and click in that left-hand bar where it says video. And um, it's always <clears throat> kind of nice to have the countdown movie just because um, it's so consistent. So let's put that one over here. So now we've got two movies that we can play here. And um, let's just uh, come down here and make a P window. Uh, P W. Oh right, I didn't type J. I typed an N. Type a J and then type P window. So it's JIT dot P window, and you can size that up to make it nice for yourself. And then um, just for the moment, let's just connect one of these to it and uh, lock your patcher and push play. Hey, there we go. We got the basketball thing happening and the basketball thing's over. So now let's push the repeat um, thing right here, it's little looping circles, and push that, and then it'll go forever. Beautiful. Okay. So we'll push uh, the same thing on the countdown. We're fairly certain it's going to work. So let's... Um, we're just starting to learn objects in Jitter um, and uh, in Mac 7. So what we've replaced here is uh, the whole... Uh, uh, here's what, uh, what, we've re what we've replaced. I'll just do it very quickly and then you'll say, oh my goodness, I'm so glad you replaced that. So I'm just going to show what it is. There's the JIT uh, key... whoops. Q, not G, Q, T, dot movie, why don't I see dot movie, dot, M, movie, no, there it is, I don't know why it wasn't coming up ahead of time, and so what we were then doing was a message of read, the countdown, countdown, dot, M-O-V, M-O-V, my typing is insane today. And then we needed a metronome to push this thing along, type new, metro 40, metro space 40, a little toggle on top of that to make it run. And let's connect this to that and just see if it works. Awesome. Oh, I forgot to read the movie. There we go. So this whole group of things is done automatically by just dragging the movie into the patcher in Mac 7. For those of you who are doing this in Mac 6 or before, you got to do this part here. If you're in Mac 7, just click over here on video, drag your movie here, and you'll uh, get a, a movie player, essentially. So I'm just going to uh, uh, unlock my patcher and get rid of this stuff, which will also get rid of that um, patch cord that I didn't need at the moment, because what we want to learn to do today is to fade 
from one thing to the other. So we need yet another uh, JIT object, and it's you know, type a J, and then you'll end up with the next thing highlighted, and I'm just going to type an X, and there it is, X fade. So X fade's a fairly simple object. It does something that you've seen um, many times, which is it just takes the input from one movie, connect that there, the input of another movie, and it can switch back and forth between them. But how to do that is you send it a message. And um, to take a shortcut here, we're just going to send it a zero point and another message called a one point. Oops, I forgot to type in. There we go. One point. And the reason I'm sending one point is just so that um, no matter what, it will be a floating point number. So uh, let's run our movies, Locker Patcher, hit run on both of them. You notice we've just got the basketball thing going on. And now we're going to hit zero. Nothing happens. Now we're going to hit one. And nothing happens. And that's primarily because um, you can't just send X fade a number. You have to send it a message with a number attached to it. So let's make that other object. We'll just type N. And you have already guessed it. It is the prepend object. And uh, we're going to prepend our number with X fade. Couldn't be easier. Send X fade to the X fade object. So let's uh, move this little guy over here and move this one to the same place. And now we will be sending X fade a message that says X fade zero and X fade one. So let's give it a try. There's the zero and here's the one. Oh, amazing, amazing. Now it works. Okay, well, very good. So it works, but it's not a very good, uh, not a really a, a very good fader as we would like to have. So let's, um, let's figure out how we would deal with that. What we should do is unlock our patcher again, and what we would really like is a slider. And so we're going to put a, uh, type the letter N, type slider, er, there we go. And, uh, in the, in the case of X fade, I like to go side to side. So I'm going to make a big fat sl slider like this. And by default, this thing goes from 0 to 127, which is not really what we want. So what we want to do is uh, go over here to the inspector. I'm going to pull this over a little bit so it's bigger and better for you. And put down here for the range. We just want to have a range of one, but we want lots of steps. One point, in fact. And we need to float the output, and oh, it says the range is two. I don't want the range to be two. I want the range to be one. Uh, output minimum, output multiplier. No, I just want one. Okay, and it's from 0 to 1. I don't know why it um, did that when I said it had to be absolute. Anyway, a range of 1, minimum output 0, uh, output multiplier 1. That is fantastic. And uh, let's just go back here um, and check to see what our output is. So we're going to type in, whoops, an M and hook it to the bottom of this thing and lock the patcher, and then just slide your patcher from the bottom to the top. So all the way at the top, it's one, and all the way at the bottom, it's zero. It is a perfect thing. 
unlocking our patcher again. We just slide this thing over here. And I think we can just get rid of that, huh? Okay. And then if we wanted to, just because we're funny people, we could pretend to have sort of like automatic buttons that uh, go from one end to the other. You'll get this in a second. So we'll hook the output of these to the top of the slider. Whoops, I, here I can hook that one there while I'm fiddling around. But this one, I want it to go to the top of the slider. So let's, there we go. So uh, to make them look right, I'm just going to make their, uh, I just uh, highlight both of them using the shift, and I'm just going to make the font really big so that they get really big. Uh, it's still not big enough. Let's make them even bigger. 48. How do you like that? Nice. Um, and what about bold? There we go. That uh, might almost be too much for me. So now if you write, now if you have your message on one side and your message on the other side, it will send it from one end to the other. So here we go, locking our patcher. Here's what happens when you hit one. Boom. And here's what happens when you hit zero. Boom, instantaneous. And here's what happens if you just wiggle your slider around. So you can get it somewhere in the middle there. Sliding from one to the other. Is that not fascinating? So, of course, the only the only thing that could be better than that would uh, would have to be to have this automated, right? An automatic slide. We can actually do that. We can make an automated uh, device to go from zero to one. All we need to do is decide um, how many milliseconds you want to do it in. Let's just do it. We're fearless people, so. Um, well, let's just keep it simple and, and call this um, milliseconds. You could multiply by a thousand if you wanted to. Um, so here's your, I'm going to just going to put a time above it, uh, a comment so that we remember. Uh, time m seconds. Okay. Okay, milliseconds isn't that much more. I'll just do it. Okay, there we go. Time, milliseconds. Here it is. And we'll make that one a little bit bigger so we can look at it. So what needs to happen is that there's a there's an object called, uh, you know, uh, enough of this basketball stuff. I, I can't take it anymore. Just be quiet. I'll let the other one run. There. And we'll leave this in the middle. Ooh. Not being fired by the X-Fade. Interesting, isn't it? only works when it's running. I'll have to keep that in mind. Okay. Anyway, so what we want is a line object um, that knows how to go from 0 to 1 and back again. So we'll type in n. Whoops, we'll unlock our patcher and then we'll type in n. And we'll type line. Now, I don't Sometimes you don't need to put a number in here, but we have to put a number in here because we're going to be using decimals. And sometimes you have to let it know. So we're just going to tell it, you're going to start on zero point something. And that way it knows it's going to be a, a float point number. Okay? So now what we're going to do is, what we want to be able to do is Every time we hit a zero, we want it to say, this is how many milliseconds you're going to uh, do, and this is uh, where you're going. Um, so we're going to utilize the kind of cool function of the, of the uh, pack and unpack objects. The cool thing about the pack object, pack, P-A-C-K, 
is that it only sends out a message when you hit the left hand inlet. A lot of them are actually like that. So our left hand inlet is going to be a decimal number. So we're going to put in zero point. And then our right hand number is going to be an integer. So we're just going to push zero. Okay. So now when we enter our milliseconds into the left inlet, nothing's going to happen, but the number will be in there. And whenever we hit either zero, just connect that there and take it off of the slide, or one, it will bang out a message that has that number of milliseconds and a zero or one. However, what the line object needs is the milliseconds to go in here. So we're going to unpack it again. And this seems kind of counterintuitive. It's just sort of a fun way of getting the same thing done. So we're going to use the unpack object with the same layout with the number zero point and then zero. And that way, whenever the message is fired out of there, it goes from the pack object to the unpack object. The unpack object takes the, here I'll make this a little bigger, milliseconds, and then it gets the destination number, where it's going, destination value, and then it sends that number out here. And that number, well we'll just put a float here so that we can watch it. And then, ultimately, we're going to connect it. We don't have to be so roundabout. Here, we'll just sneak up through here. To our crossfade slide right here. Very good. Okay, so let's lock our patchers, turn the basketball movie back on, because we know it's not going to work otherwise. And um, in milliseconds here, let's let's put in um, a thousand. That would be one second. So we're going to have a one second crossfade. And then let's just go ahead and hit a zero and see what it does. Nothing. It's already there. Oh, it did do it. Good. And let's hit a one and, and watch what happens. Oh, nice. See that? See that fade? Zero. Bzzz. One. Great. Let's make it 2,000 milliseconds. People will be designing your own um, Adobe Premiere any second now, I can just tell. Okay, so here's locking our patcher again. Is it locked? It is locked. Here we go. Down to zero. Two nice smooth seconds and back up to one. And the only thing I can say about this that's really driving me crazy is this bar, which I don't like at all, because I feel like it should just be a red bar in the middle. So let's unlock our patchers, get the inspector on this, and stop this crazy... Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Hit the inspector button, and um, somewhere it should say what kind of... Hey, come on. Um what kind of indicator this thing is. There we go. And uh, what the heck, while we're at it, let's make it red. There we go. That's too red. There we go. All right. Now we have a solid crossfade button here. And I'm just going to run it one more time because... There we go. And... Back up to one. Very nice. The only thing I can think of here... Nah, that's all good. There we go. Okay, well, that's it. We automated the crossfade. We made it a beautiful thing. And that's it for today. So, patch well. Thanks for watching the tutorial, and I will see you next time around. Take care.